Hi, this is Greg and uh, at the uh, University of Maryland, and I'm just going to give you a quick tour of the International Research Portal um, research project site, the demo, and show off some of the new features. So without further ado, uh, let's begin. This is our demo site, and one thing you can notice right away is that there is now a sign up and login uh, links in the top right. So let's let's do that. Instead of logging in, I'm going to make a new account, which means I fill in this form here. Uh, let's call it Greg Test Z. All right, all logged in. So now we have a little account menu up here. None of those things work yet, but uh, the sign out does. So that's logging into the portal. With logging into the portal, it should allow us to save our searches, sort of a favorites list. Uh, but let's go ahead and show off some of the new features. So I'm going to do a keyword search for violin. And I want to add uh, translations of violin to German. Let's search for that. So here we are once again are often searching 10 different collections. But this time, we are also searching those collections with the German word for violin, which I won't try to pronounce. For example, here are our results in Magdeburg. So you can see that both the English term and the German term were used to do the search. And we got lots of uh, well, 11 results that were relevant. OK, let's do another search. This time, we're going to look for the term uh, painting. And this time, we want to translate into French. Takes a bit, searching a bunch of uh, sites. Okay. So here are results for painting. Um, many collections with results for that term. Uh, and let's look at the Holocaust Museum. So you can see that the way that the painting term has been plugged into this site is slightly different from the other sites. Different sites have different requirements for how you use how you do searches on more than one term, um, and so you can see we have a French term and an English term. And down below, we have some matching results. For instance, this painting right here. Okay, moving along, uh, I'm going to show you a search for an artist name. So we'll type in Klimt and search. This time we want to go to uh, appropriate countries, so we're going to just try and go to Austria. So here are the results for the Klimt search in Austria. Now the important thing to note here is that Austria is not implemented as a separate artist field search yet. That's something we have to do. 
but that when that happens, when we don't know how to search specifically for the artist, then we put the term in the generic keywords uh, field. So you see it's there in the generic keywords field. When we do know how to search by author, then we use the specific field, or when we've done the work anyway. Um, so another artist is Rembrandt. Got it already in here. the Rembrandt results. Lots of results for Rembrandt. Uh, and let's go to the Netherlands collection. Now where is it? Why am I not seeing it? There it is. So this Netherlands uh, archives is, um, I don't think it's specific to artwork so it doesn't have a separate artist field. So in this case, our search term is just being used as a generic search term, and we'd probably have to remain that way since there is no separate advanced search field for artist. But we still have relevant results, and we can zoom into uh, this one, for example, and see an ad for a Rembrandt sale from the Dordrecht Courants. Yeah, so Rembrandt for sale. Back in the portal again. Let's do a search for Monet. and uh, many results for Monet, of course. Um, but let's go to the Holocaust Museum, where, as indicated by this, um, this text here, artist is a supported field, it's highlighted, and it was used in this search. So there are 26 results there, where we are specifically able to match on artist. And this is what we'd like to do with as many collections as possible. So these are all works by a Monet, and yes, you can recognize them. For instance, here's the wonderful portrait of a sleeping baby boy. Okay, so let's try our next field, which is uh, location. Let's try Paris, of course. Takes us a while to get to Paris. So many items must match Paris. There we go. Lots of results for Paris. Um, we want to go see the State Archives in Belgium catalog. Once again, uh, this, well, not once again, this is the um, a database that's local to our site. It's an XML file that was created from the PDF of a finding aid that's in Belgium. So we have a couple of hits in the uh, finding aid, and these are just different sections of the finding aid that mention Paris. So we can see where Paris appears here. Um, Paris, Paris Peace Conference. There you go. Let's see. Back on the uh, back on the portal. Let's do an Amsterdam search. Amsterdam. All right. Uh, this time, let's go to the Getty catalog. Here we are. Paris. 
Paris is not in a separate field in the Getty Catalog. But if we go back, we can then look at, oops, I, I mean Amsterdam, of course. Um, if we go back, we can look for uh, the Holocaust Museum again, and location is something we're doing separately on the Holocaust Museum. So there's 22 results. Um, and if we look at the search form that's pre-populated, when we go to the results, there's Amsterdam under provenance and comments, which was just the best field we could find, we thought we could find for um, searching for places mentioned. However, uh, after the meeting on Monday, uh, we did hear back that perhaps general keyword search would be better since in Paris or uh, Amsterdam could really appear in many other fields. Um, but nonetheless, um, here we are with uh, Amsterdam in the provenance and comments. Describing the transfers of, of art objects. All right. Um, another feature to show is phrase search. So we have a few phrases. Let's say portrait of the artist, portrait of artist. Sort of a common phrase. Uh, let's try searching for that. It's in quotes, as you can see. Now we're sort of passing these quoted strings onto the search, the collection searches. So the results will depend on whether they support um, phrase search or not. So we have results for the portrait of artist phrase, uh, and we want to go to Getty, let's say, and here you can see that we've passed along the phrase search to the Getty and got a number of results. So now, what if we um, want to expand that search to French and German? Let's show how that works. Here we go. And you can see right below the search box the translations, uh, the French and the German. And if we go to uh, Joe de Pomme, you can see how these different phrases were combined. In one uh, search, Boolean search, of all the different versions of that phrase. And we have some results in uh, French, the portrait de l'artiste. I won't pronounce that correctly. All right. Uh, well, one more thing to do is to show you the email of results functionality. So that's reached through this uh, icon here. This whole user interface is sort of provisional, so uh, icons and buttons may be changed. But this does emailing right now. And if you click on it, it will uh, compose, bring up your email compose program. Mine is Thunderbird. Could be Gmail, could be something else. And it pre-populates the body of the email with uh, a search URL, the one you've just done. So it's basically taking what's uh, in the location bar of your browser and putting it into the email and has it ready for you to you know, add a note to. And add a to address to. And then away you go. Oh, you may not have seen that since I'm recording one window. But anyway, I, I, I did some things in my email client. Um, 
And the last thing to show you is the saving of searches, which if you click on this button, then we'll put your search in our in your personal uh, history with the site after you've logged in, uh, and we've saved your search. So that's your uh, your new tour of the the portal, and uh, feel free to ask any questions you have back online. Thank you very much.